Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Video bandwidth for the Gizwiz is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Audio bandwidth for the Gizwiz is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full length CD listening parties. Download it free at winamp.com slash Android. It's time for the Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick DiBartolo. This episode, 1,391, recorded on Tuesday, November 20th, 2012. Black and Blue Friday. And now, get ready for Dick. And now, here he is, Mad's maddest writer and the Gizwiz, Dick DiMontolo! It's the same dumb show with Dickie D and Leo Laporte on Twit TV. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing, growing LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now! And as energetic as that intro was, it is in fact a fraud because Leo Laporte isn't here. My name is Justin Robert Young, and this man, ladies and gentlemen, here yet again, Dick DiBartolo, the Gizwiz. Justin, great to see you. I hope you have Chad locked in the cellar because you were supposed to host this three weeks in a row. Three weeks the in a row. Yep. The first week you had that car accident. I did. And I think you should have been suspicious because you were on the third floor in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, it, listen, so, it's a very tricky highway. I don't know if you've yeah, ever know, tried to I drive know, in Orlando, but it's hard. Then, yeah, last week the food poisoning. I told you don't accept muffins from Chad, but no. No, no. I'll no. tell you what. Okay. Uh, he is the muffin man. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's one thing that he's good at. It's poisoning you with muffins. But you want to know what, Dick? I've taken precautions. Obviously, I'm yes. here now. I, I yes, am. Yes. I am in in full health, and uh, and we will do a great show. There's no way we'll have any Chattington interference. That's a guarantee. Okay. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> by the by, way, by the way, just... your hair looks fantastic. Yeah. Did you know? Oh, you know, I didn't think you would pick up on it. Yeah, it's changed up just a little bit. No, I'll tell you what. You look you look uh, somewhere between Howard Stern and a bassist for a funk band in the East Bay in 1984. And something I fished out of the Hudson River. That's what I found <laughs> in, 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 the, in the Hudson River. Anyway, no, I just want you have so much, you know, you have a stash and I have a stash, but you have so much on the top, I felt, uh, you know, I'll leave it on for, for a bit more. Uh, it makes me more comfortable. I, I grew oh, the stash oh, okay. out to make you more comfortable, so now oh, I feel good. like, okay. uh, and for anybody who's, who's only listening to this and not watching it on video, it does look like, uh, like uh, a, 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 we're doing our own knockoff of Looper. Like, this is our own cornfield, and, and now uh, Dick has appeared before me, and I can see my future. Yeah, you, you know what? It's like I'm look when I look at you, it's like I'm looking in a mirror. It a really very is. bad, distorted, <laughs> broken, shattered mirror. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What are the marks on your shirt? I, maybe I should know what the shirt is. I like the shirt. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this is this is the uh, the 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 diamond logo, which is of course the emblem. Oh of, yeah, the, uh, your book. Oh, uh, my yeah, Lord. well, the, the the Diamond Club was the book that me and uh, and Brian Brushwood and the chat realm, uh, who are fans of NSFW show. For those of you who are are, are unaware uh, of it, if you like this show, you will very 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 much like NSFW. It is a, a very silly uh, show where we do a lot of uh, a lot of fun things. But really, what you and Leo do on this show with physical gadgets, we like to do with the internet. We find new, fun, interesting little tidbits on the internet, and like you and Leo, where you guys poke and prod and break the gadgets that you so find uh, marvelous and interesting. We do with internet conventions and, and memes. So everybody, go wow, check that, that out. that sounds like a show. It does, it does. There really is. There's a lot of synergy that I'm only now becoming aware of between oh. our two shows. <laughs> good, okay, very good, very good. Well, today my, my gadgets aren't too kooky. Let me just think for a minute. -da 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 -da. They're, they're sort of... Sane, but sane okay. but fun. 
No, okay. I'll tell you. What, I think we're gonna have we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a great time. And I got one. And listen, I got a, I got a panicked email from from the producer of this show, Jason Howe. He says to me, <laughs> exactly. You can hear him breathing because he's just now getting yeah, over. Yeah, it. that's yeah. the way he is. Yeah. You know, yeah. he yeah. says he says to me, listen, you gotta bring a gadget to the show. And the problem is that Dig D Bartolo is the master of this. He's done every gadget on the planet. <laughs> Okay, so you, if you're gonna bring something, it's gotta be something he's never seen before. And I think I have brought something you have not seen before. All right, okay, well, we'll see. I'll do a couple and then uh, you'll do a gadget. Absolutely. And we'll find out. Um, okay, so 3M, 3M, um, very famous for making a line of projectors. Absolutely. And, and you know Roku, you know about the Roku stick? Uh, yeah, no, um, okay. um, I, I, I own a Roku box, and I'm very excited. Uh, I've not gotten my hands on a Roku stick, but they look awesome. Okay, well, this is kind of neat. 3M mm -hmm. teamed up with Roku, and they came out with the 3M streaming projector. Yeah, now, this, this thing looks, looks amazing. Like yeah, now I, I have one here. So yeah. if Jason wants, <clears throat> wants to cut to my close-up camera, <clears throat> you can see that this little guy is pretty small fits in the palm of my hand yeah and inside the I, I took it out there's a little door in the back here the roku stick goes in here it goes in the side and then you have up to 600 channels that you can project on a wall and you can project it anywhere from six inches to six feet now it has a built-in battery. Depending on if you go into a Kano mode, yeah, which knocks which knocks the light down by twenty percent, you get uh, almost three hours out of it. Wow. If you go to the the, the full sixty lumens, and there there are uh, L, uh, three LEDs in there, yeah, doing the projecting. And it was very funny because I charged the battery up. I went out in the hall last night, and I figured I'll just let neighbors going up and down the stairs i'm impressed <laughs> with that and it, it was very it was really neat i was showing a movie through netflix on yeah. the, on the wall of the apartment here then i was projecting it on the ceiling then my ceiling uh bedroom is very dark uh the ceiling is but you can still see a pretty good image but if you travel and you go with the kids and you're in a hotel room and there's Wi-Fi and you want to entertain them or you actually <laughs> you want them to entertain themselves sure, you sure. and get a quiet meal, uh, this thing is really neat. It's the 3M streaming projector. It's been out about a month now. Uh, it's $299. And, and, and by the way, it looks good. Like, it's got it, a nice little, I mean, like, if it were voiced in, like, a Don Bluth cartoon, like, I think it would be a famous person that would voice it. It's got personality to it. It, it, it does. It, it, it does. One, uh, uh, a little uh, mono speaker built in, uh, but it has audio out. So if you have yeah, a, people are asking know, about the 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 inputs uh, on on the device. What is what does it got on it? You know, the, 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 this is how the input works. The, there's actually just one input. So basically, what you would do is take out the Roku stick. Okay. And then any device you have that has an HDMI out, slide into the projector, and then it will project that image. Now, obviously, so, with, with Roku, and it is something that is burgeoning, because when I first bought the Roku, or, or, or I had the Roku box bought for me, actually, uh, it was all Netflix, really. I mean, that, that was practically what I got out of it. Now, when you have HBO Go, which is, uh, for any subscriber to HBO, uh, fantastic, and especially for something like this, you know, if you want all of your HBO programming, obviously, if you have a Roku and it's on your home television where you also have your cable box where you have to be subscribing to HBO Go to get it, uh, that's not tremendously useful. But for something like this, it would be fantastic. You can go anywhere, yeah. like you said, with Wi-Fi, boom, right there up on the screen, there's Game of Thrones. And guess who else is on Roku? Who like, else is on uh, Roku? Perhaps you've heard of twit.tv. I'll get on to it. <laughs> I'll listen to it. No, yeah, of course, twit.tv has a fantastic yeah. Roku app, uh, and, and you can stream all this uh, programming. So you, you can be anywhere uh, on the road. Now, as long as you have Wi-Fi. That's the only thing. As long as you have Wi-Fi. Right. Now, uh, answer me this, because obviously... Battery is the key thing here. If you can plug it in, which I don't know where 
you would be that you need like ah oh, you know like I'm 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 driving behind a truck and I need to to play uh, Veep on there on the on the back of this semi truck while I drive to Texas. Uh, I don't know where you would be without something to plug it in, but when it's in economy mode, how dark is dark? Like, is it watchable? Is it something that you can? That you, you know can what? Pay I tell you, to? it was it was fine in the hallways, and the hallways. There's no way I don't know how to turn the hallway lights out, and the hallways have fluorescent lights like every ten feet, so the sure. hallways fa fairly bright. Now you don't want to get up to the you know a six foot image. But I was doing, I would say, a three-foot uh, a three foot image. As a matter of fact, I did three feet, and then I did a little bigger, and I had uh, my partner, Dennis, run upstairs and get a ruler. So we were doing a 40-inch yeah. image on the wall, and people were saying, that looks really good. And what were you showing them on Netflix? Uh, you know, I was showing Netflix. Uh, I, uh, what was I, I had up there? Uh, Midsummer Murder. I, I like murder mysteries. Sure. And... It's a series, uh, it's a, a BBC series from about, I think about 10 years ago. That's not, um, that's not, not the Woody Allen movie, right? What was the Woody Allen movie? Oh, no, no, no. Um, that's mid -sum. Oh, Manhattan Murders. No, 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 no. But there's the other, there's there's the one where it's in like the Russian Revolution. That's all like a midsummer Chat room, night chat stream. room, quick chat room. Come, come to on. our aid. Midsummer well, Night's sex comedy. There we go. Midsummer <laughs> Night's sex comedy. Uh... <laughs> See, there we go. Bring in the Woody Allen tidbits. I don't know. Chad didn't have anything like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't. And I met Woody Allen. I can drag up my Woody Allen story. You have a Woody Allen story? What's a Woody Allen story? Yeah, yeah. Spill he was it, looking Dick. for. <laughs> he was looking for a houseboat to be in uh, a movie about three years ago. I even forgot the name of the movie. Um, oh, anyway, that must have down... been no, because he only shot one in New York recently. It was the one with Larry David. Um, that was it. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? Again, we need the chat room. Uh, um, yeah, so anyway, no, his, whatever his, works. Yes, whatever works. His, whatever <laughs> works. Whatever works. So his funkies came down, go. and they went houseboat, houseboat, houseboat. And uh, one morning, I got a call, and and the woman said, "This is so and so from Woody Allen's office, and we've narrowed it down to two houseboats. Yours is you one a houseboat finalist. Yes, exactly." Uh, is it okay if Mr. Allen comes down at noon? And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> so I went down to meet him, and uh, turns out that he is very nervous on docks and was terrified, had two people on each arm wow. uh, walking, walking him down the dock. Turns out a neurotic he, guy. Who's he really guess? is. But he's also, I thought he would be jokey and, and he was very serious and, and he had like an entourage, but it wasn't like an entourage, a suck up entourage. Yeah. One was the lighting director, one was Santos, his uh, uh, interior design, scenic designer. Yeah. Um, and he came on and he looked around and, and I said, uh, Woody, there's, you know, there's a, another room in the back of the boat. He said, oh, good, let's go look there. And he looked around and then he said, I like the view in the front better so we went up there and uh he said you know what i i think i'm not going to use your boat and he said i'll tell you why um in, in the movie someone lends a college kid a boat ah. and he said this is a 50-foot houseboat and you have like all wood floors and it's it's really nicely kept up and i think it doesn't make sense that someone would say let's give a college kid this boat so it's too nice and, of a boat too nice. I said, sure, Woody, take my crappy neighbor's boat. What do I care? Anyway, <laughs> that, was, that was my my brush with Woody Allen. I'll tell you what. This is like 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 uh, uh, to me like like New York comedy royalty uh, meeting. This is this is the Jetsons meet the Flintstones. This is that's a fantastic wow, story. Wow. This is this is well, you know, in California, this is like OMG Chad meeting Jason. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, I'll tell you what. Somebody can now go ahead and make a little mini movie out of just that story. They can sell it to Netflix, and they can run it up on some stranger's wall using the 3M Roku portable projector. How's Perfect. that for a plan? Perfect. Perfect. We'll sell the idea to 3M. Exactly. Uh, although I, I heard that 3M was not interested, but 2M is thinking about it. <laughs> Actually, no, M&M's is thinking about it. Exactly. So exactly. We, we have a shot. We have uh, a shot. And C4 is uh, just <laughs> blown up with the idea. Exactly, exactly. Now, you know what? You said you had a weird gadget. So 
I, 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 my feeling is it's not going to be the weird gadget I have. No. Because I was at an event called Pepcom. Okay. And, and actually, the, the three things I'm talking about today are from this uh, Pepcom event. And what does what is, what so, is Pepcom stand uh, for? Uh, Pepcom is a trade show where they show new products, and they do one at CES, and they do one right before the holidays. Ah. Uh, you know, it's where it, I, I love those kind of events. Showstoppers is another one sure. where they'll they'll get like 50 uh, vendors. And what's great about it is all they have is the newest product, a PR person and an executive. So you can go from table to table and get your questions answered. Unlike CES where I mean, it's a zoo, right? It's a it's like a and I mean, literally, they have ostriches and a few do, African that, wild you know, dogs. I, well, there's no ostriches this year because oh, no fine, budget yeah. cutbacks. Exactly, exactly. They were using them for transportation. That part was okay, <laughs> but uh, you have not lived until you've seen Steve Bomber trample the lobby of the win on an ostrich. That yeah. is the sight. Yeah, you saw my photos. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're on my website, uh, my private website. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I'm walking around and this guy says, you know, I've got this great Wi-Fi device. I go, uh, I, I said, L let me guess, a way to stream video uh, from your bedroom to your refrigerator, from your refrigerator to your car. You know, people are streaming stuff everywhere. Sure. And, and they're coming up with the most bizarre scenarios. So this guy said, so you take your cell phone and you want to make a call, but then you suddenly realize that your son's playing soccer, so you want to see him playing soccer. Why? So I'm streaming my kid's soccer game into this, and at the same time, I'm setting the temperature on my Nest Learning uh, thermometer. Yeah. I, go, I go, sir, these scenarios <laughs> don't exist. No. So, and I'm expecting to hear this from this guy. And he said, yeah, this is Wi-Fi for your plant. And All I said, right. wait a minute. What? This is Wi-Fi for your plant. He said, come here. I'll show you. I said, you're not going to show me a kid playing soccer, right? He says, no, I'm no. going to show you the, the health of my I'm plant. I'm going to show you my plant playing soccer. My and plant? by playing soccer, I mean living a healthy life. Yes. So he shows me the health of his plant, and his plant is in Switzerland. Wow. Okay. okay. So I said to the guy, well, wait a minute. What if your plant says, help, I need water? He said, well, hopefully. Or however that is in Swiss man language. In Swiss man, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I said, all right, so assuming you have the phone number of someone who has the key to your house who can go water your plant, tell yeah. me about the Kubachi Wi-Fi plant sensor. Okay. So it's Wi-Fi enabled. You put it in a plant. Then you go to their website and you tell the website the name of the plant. Or if you don't know the name of the plant, you look through photos and you say, oh, it looks like that. Sure. Then you water the plant. Uh-huh. And the sensor sees how long it takes for it to dry out and use up the water. Okay. And it stores that information. And he yeah. said, let the sensor do two cycles of drinking water and the sense of knowing how dry the plant is getting, how much sunshine the plant, it also tracks light that the plant is getting. Okay. <clears throat> and then it makes a health report and you pick a time and once every 24 hours, it'll send you a health report of that plant. Man. So I said to the I said to the guy, how much does this cost? He so said, so this, this pops in, and we're seeing a, a picture of this now, but but just to give a, a sense to everybody, it pops in kind of like a thermometer. Like it. it yes, just, exa yes, exactly. It, yes, yeah. if you were taking uh, the plant's uh, temperature, exactly. And then, and then sticking out of the top of the plant looks like one of the, the little creatures from batteries not included. Yes, exactly. And it has a little light sensor there, so it's measuring the light that your plant is getting. And I said to the guy, yeah, but you have 10 plants in for $1,000. And he said, no, after it learns the cycle of one plant okay, to another plant, and then when you go into the website, it will you can pick plant A or B. And, you know, as a matter oh. of fact, let's just run the video. I'm All right, sorry. Yeah, Jay. let's just watch Maybe, this. Yeah, let's do this. 
Hey, Dick T. Bartolo, Mads, Mad Destroyer, and the Gizwiz. I'm here at Pepcom. A lot of new gadgets here. The problem is you walk around and people go, Dick, I have this device. I can send video from my phone to my refrigerator, from the refrigerator to the bedroom, you know. I'm Oh, I mean, everybody's streaming everything, everywhere. So I walk by this plan, or oh, this plan. Well, I'm, we're going to talk about this plan. But at this booth, Kevin is about to say, I can stream Wi-Fi. And I go, Kevin, I know. The kids, you can stream it across the country. He goes, no, I'm checking on my plant that's in Switzerland. Kevin, is this true? This is true, yes. And how are you doing that? We're doing it with the Kubachi Wi-Fi plant sensor. Is that this weird thing? That That's this doing? right here. So this is a Kubachi Wi-Fi plant sensor that measures soil moisture, light, and temperature. Sorry, I let. Can I? He's new at this, folks. Okay. <laughs> soil moisture, light, and temperature. So what this does is it sends a signal to the plant care engine in Switzerland, which will then give detailed plant care instructions, and it'll push it out to my iPhone or to my iPad or to my computer, and it'll be basically be a concierge to tell me how to take care of my plants. It'll tell me when to fertilize it, when, yep. It'll tell me when to water it, when to mist it, fertilize. It'll give me a vitality index of how comfortable Percy is. And this is real-time information right now. In wait, wait, Percy, Percy the plant? Percy the plant. Percy the plant. Percy the plant. So Kubachi gives your plant a voice, right? So this sensor will then send the data back and give the plant a voice. Now, if you find out your plant needs water and you are here and your plant's in Switzerland, yeah. what do you do about that? Hopefully you have somebody back home that could help you out and go into your house and water your plant for you. But you can send the push notification you can send them an email and say, hey, I just got notified by Kubachi. Can you please go and water my plant? Okay. You don't, you don't, you don't text a plant, don't and, text say, the plant. And, and say, hang on. It's not quite that. Hang, hang on. Uh, okay. Uh, so now uh, price? Price is $99 for the indoor Wi-Fi sensor and $129 for the outdoor. The outdoor can also be used indoors, and they're available on Amazon.com. Now, do you need one of these for every plant? That's a really good question. No, you don't. You can use the sensor in a plant, go through two cycles of watering, and that could be up to 10 days if the plant gets water every five days, and then I move it to the next plant. So I take this and I go from Percy, and this one is called Dumbo, and Dumbo no longer has a sensor in it because it's been calibrated. Oh, okay, so once it's calibrated, you can move it on to another plant. On to another plant. Right. And in the app, I can have up to 27 plants in my library. Okay, and great. tell me what to do and how to take care of them. Right, no, I'm sorry, yeah. you can't. This plant is talking to me. Exactly. This, this, this plant says, can I be on camera? All right, you're on camera. Uh, so, Kevin, uh, your website? Kubachi.com. K-O-U-B-A-C-H-I.com. Dick DiBartolo, Mads Medis writer, and the Gizwiz at Pepcom with the plant that wants to be on camera. Do a close-up of the plant. Meanwhile, I'll walk on. I'll tell you what, Dick, I didn't appreciate that obscene gesture the plant made at the end of that video. I apologize <laughs> yeah, I to all the children yeah, watching. Yeah, I know, I know. That's why sometimes the audio version is better. It is, yeah. it is. Uh, you, you uh, are you a plant person? You want to you... know what? It's funny because I am actually, uh, the reason why I wasn't able to do the last couple of weeks is because my job, uh, I, I work for a company called The Go Game. We put on these high-tech scavenger hunts all over the country, and it takes me away from my apartment in Oakland very, very often. And lately, I've been trying to grow a basil plant because I, I oh. use basil a lot. Wow. And, and this would be very, very good. Now, obviously, there are a couple flaws here in terms of uh, you know stopping short of a full solution for somebody like me, for which this would be very, very helpful. The first is I need a friend to water my plant. Oh, yeah, you're a dead man. Well, no, Brian, oh, Brian lives too far away. He lives right? in Austin. Although, I'll tell mm -hmm. you what, maybe if I could have those emails relayed from uh, me to Brian in Austin, he would have a friend in Oakland that could come and water my plant. That That's might be the way bet. to go. That's your best bet. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think 
I don't know. I mean, what is the the price on this is ninety nine? You know, yeah. You know, I think he's gonna have a hard time. I'm not sure. Uh, ninety nine bucks for the indoor version, one twenty nine for the outdoor version. So I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll tell you what, you put a little reservoir on it, maybe have it be able to water it, you know, like, but when it needs water, it gets water, then I think we're, we're talking, because even for a short-term solution, like, maybe, you know, it could it could hang out there for, like, a week or so, uh, that would be something I'd be interested in, because I want to, I want my plant, Basil Exposition, to do well, but unfortunately, oh, yeah, yeah, it just What's died. your plant's name? Ba Basil Exposition. Like oh, in Basil Austin Powers. Oh, okay, okay. Now, did your plan have a name before this spot, or were you inspired? Uh, no, it didn't. Uh, okay. Dick, you busted me. I'm showing off here yeah, on the Gizlis, yeah, yeah. and now here I am with my insecurities yeah. laid bare for you. Well, no, and I, no, all of our I, no, no, I'm, I'm in a very hurt. It could have been Giz the plan. It could have been Giz. It. Oh, yeah. you want to know what? Yeah. That's okay. That's I'll tell fine. you what. I think this. I'm getting fired after this episode. There's no, no way. You're I'm not getting. That. You're not getting fired at all. <laughs> Jason, uh, do you have Chad's cell phone number? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. right. No, okay, okay. 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 Listen, uh, uh, Dick, give me one yeah. more uh, gadget here. Maybe I'll be able to make it up. Maybe we can get okay. on, on okay. short By the footage. way, I love Oakland. <laughs> Who doesn't? Because of I, I happen to be a train fan. And isn't ah. Oakland where the trains run down the center of the street at Jack London Square? They do. Indeed, they do. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. Uh, right in the middle of everything, which uh, is is all uh, redone. There's actually a list, and I'm sure somebody will be able to pick it up in the, in the chat room. But uh, I think it was a New York Times, or the New York Times, the New York Times magazine listed like the hundred coolest, hippest cities, I believe they called it, uh, that you need to visit. And Oakland was the highest American city, and was in between London and Tokyo, like wow. not San Francisco. Uh, Tell me right. how my you know I, I think I East think Bay you were San Francisco. At, uh, it's only on Apple Maps. Yes, exactly. Is between <laughs> London. Yes, exactly. Apple mm. Maps has pinned the the hippest city in America. Yeah. And uh, you know what else? London. You you have a great theater there that I I've never been uh, never it, gone when it's open. Don't you have a, like one of those old Paramount, movie Paramount palette? Theater and, and the Fox Theater, and then uh, my favorite movie theater is the Grand Lake. Uh, which is right near uh, my apartment and is fantastic. It's great. It's an old opera style uh, theater that uh, is is fantastic and it's family owned, which I know it's family owned because uh, whenever the political whim suits them, they take up literally half their marquee on a vitriolic political screen, <laughs> uh, which is amazing. And I love, even if I don't uh, agree or not agree, with whether or not uh, the political creed is correct. I love the fact that they do it. And I just want, at some point, for the entire marquee to be their screed. And then they just have, at the very end, listings within. That would be, yes, right. that would be my all, favorite we, thing. We ever. happen to be also be showing a movie inside. Yes. S also, S <laughs> maybe Wreck-It Ralph's inside. Check. Yes, yes, yeah, that's right. Ask, ask Clark what we're showing. We don't have room up here to tell you. <laughs> exactly. We're too busy talking about the thieves trying to that's... steal this city. <laughs> uh, All right, the third question yes. uh, about the third gadget is, are you a big screen TV fan? Love them. I'll tell you what. Uh, they're the best thing ever. I don't think anybody in this world could live without it except for the people that do live without it who don't know what they're missing. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I happen to have a very old flat-screen TV. The company's out of business. I have an Olivia 37-inch TV, which is the biggest I could... I live in a two-and-a-half-room apartment. Yeah. So a 37-inch TV for me is like wall, almost wall-to-wall. -wall. Okay. Uh, but at Pepcom, Vizio... Now, uh, Scott Wilk... You know Scott Wilkinson, or you know who he is, Yes, right? I do, I do. Home theater geeks. Yeah. He's always talking about Vizio as being uh, one of the best brands in the budget or lower price TV sets. They're, yeah, so they, they changed the game in terms of HGTVs. They, I know they, on they the consumer really level. have. Well, at, at Pepcom, they introduced the 70-inch Vizio Woo! Smart TV with complete apps. And it was very interesting because a friend of mine was saying, you know, I want to buy this Samsung smart TV, but 
how do you type on the screen? I said, well, doesn't it come with a keyboard? And he says, no. And I said, well, if you have to go through that thing where you go one letter at a time using the yeah. remote for right. That's so kind of, anyway, that's, that's totally Bonerville. You don't want to do Yes, that. exactly. So uh, I asked about that on the Vizio and the guy flipped over the Vizio remote control. One side are all the TV controls and you flip it over and the other side is a complete QWERTY keyboard. So, oh, there. Uh, uh, and, well, and so it's just in the regular, uh, what we what we know to be a remote control uh, footprint, unlike what we've seen with like the Google TVs, which look like something that you could concuss an individual with. They're just yes. gigantic hulking masses uh, for yes. which if you dropped it off a third story building, it would crack open a passerby's skull like a candy cream egg. Yeah, I think Consumer Reports did that. They they very <laughs> thorough in their, in their testing. But this one looks good. Like it would yeah. just it would just be sitting on your your uh, table in front of your television. You wouldn't even yeah. know that it was a QWERTY keyboard. No, exactly, exactly. Now the thing is, it's not. I I was kind of surprised at the price. The the, the list price is. Nineteen ninety nine, almost two thousand dollars, and yeah. it's not three D. But I'm not a big three D fan. No, are However, we done with that? By the way, can we officially just start throwing third on 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 the three D TV thing? Can no, we no, don't say that to Scott Wilkinson. Uh, sorry, Scott. You, so then now it's three of us: Leo, you, and I. We're not big three D fans. Here's all I know: everything I need to know about consumer behavior, I learn when I go get free samples from Walmart. Okay, when you yeah, go get okay. free samples from Walmart, you walk through the big TV aisle, and I eventually just saw the slow ebbing of 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 3D TVs. They used to be right up front, like three different manufacturers at 3D TVs. They all wanted you to make sure which one was the best. About six months later, went down to one 3D TV, and now all the big screen TVs that are there for people to buy for the holiday season, they're all the Big, crystal clear, gigantic. People are going for size. They're going for clarity. But the 3D yes. TVs relegated to the back, back of the bus for the 3D TVs. Yeah. They're not no, selling. I think, I, I think you're absolutely right. So if 70 inch, if you can live with a 60 inch vis, Vizio, the let's, same, uh, let's the same, say uh, theoretically, stats. you can you can live in the outhouse with the 60 inch. Yeah, TV. yeah, exactly. So the list price drops in half. Wow. So the Vizio 60-inch smart TV, you get the same remote, you get all the apps on the screen, you get SRS HD stereo sound system. It drops to $9.99, and I was doing a pre-Black Friday web search, okay. and Walmart is going to sell it for $6.88. The 60-inch? The the 60 inch Vizio Smart TV. Someone's gonna get shot, Dick. This is gonna be this is gonna be like Hunger Games. <laughs> yes. This is yeah. gonna get ugly. And I don't even I mean know. the part where the kids are killing each other. I mean where the wolf creatures come out at the end, spoiler alert. I know. Like I it's know. gonna be I, it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be I, I sent out a tweet. They should call it black and blue Friday. They because should. People are just going to be killing they each other. They should call it black and gray to symbolize the headstones that will be minted for the people that dare go to get, what is it, 688 $700 for a 60-inch TV? Yeah, yeah, a 60-inch smart TV. Pretty amazing. Uh, Zephyr in the chat places. room saying there's a 40-inch for uh, for $199. No, th no wonder this is just, it's going to be oh. like, like the man with the iron fist. It's going to be a melee. Wow. Wow. I have no idea. I'll, I'll tell you, I always want to go in on, on, on Black Friday because, I mean, these are fantastic deals. And I'm glad that we're able to, uh, I'm honored, actually, that I can do the Gizwiz uh, on, on a, uh, an episode that preludes Black Friday when a lot of people are going to be buying a lot of gadgets. They're going to be putting themselves in bodily harm uh, to do it. But holy smokes. I mean, I guess this is the time to buy a TV. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, before we get to your gadget, we just have a commercial here from the friends who are uh, offering Black Friday body insurance. Sure. Just send us $500 in cash. Yeah. And we will insure you for the larger bones of your body. And there are certain exceptions. You cannot leave your house. No. You must shop online. Yeah. 
you must take delivery in person. Absolutely. And we must approve the item once you get it. Uh -huh. So just forward it, and, forward and it and to no, us. Notary we'll take Republic a, also. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. to just look at it, make sure there are no sharp corners, <laughs> and then you're covered. You're good. And yeah, that's, that's a Gizwiz guarantee. That's um, right. And actually, right. you know, there's another one more commercial. Uh, uh, you guys might have all remembered uh, there was a company in the news uh, a couple of years ago called uh, Blackwater. Uh, it was a private security firm that was oh, yeah, uh, basically yeah, a private yeah. army that was going uh, through various developing nations and helping secure the interests of whoever would pay for them. A mercenary force. Now they can be your mercenary force, ladies and gentlemen, for this Black Friday. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Blackwater's Black Friday mercenary sale. You can have your own mercenary run into the stores and get your presents by any means necessary. When you think Black Friday, think Blackwater. Wow. You know, we should get the two companies together. Maybe they could make a, like a, a two-for-one deal or Absolutely. get one, get 40% off the bundles other. Bundles yeah. are a big thing these Yeah, days. bundles are big. Absolutely. Black Friday, get your Black Friday bundle. <laughs> Black bundle. Black Whoa, bundle. Black bundle. Bam, bam. Uh, all right. So now there's a part of the show that used to be called Turn the Table Thursday because it used to be a daily show and, and it was the fourth uh, item. And now we call it Turn the Table Turkey or Turn the Table Treasure Yeah. because sometimes Leo would get something that really turned out to be decent or normally he finds a piece of crap. But yeah. you can pick anything you want. And the next gadget is you to describe and demonstrate and amaze us. All right. Uh, this is going to be a turn-the-table <laughs> treasure. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It was something that, that actually got quite a bit of press. Uh, it blew up. Uh, and because of the subsequent press, we wound up um, becoming friends with the inventor on NSFW show. Let me, uh, let me just give you oh. a look at, at what this is. Dick, do you have a question? No, no, no. Okay. I, I was just, I was ooing and ahhing. Oh, good. Uh, Dick, what is this? Uh, here, I'll put it on the on the spot, which I was told to put it on, uh, so they can go and get a look at it. Uh, what did you, uh, what, is that, what does that look like to you? Uh, let's see. You put your iPhone near <laughs> it, and it can amplify the music. I'll tell you what. Probably not incorrect, uh, but many people would look at it as uh, a, a shot glass. They would use it as oh. a shot glass. So you could okay. uh, put a little uh, little booze in there, a little bit of uh, you know, grandpa's old cough syrup, and uh, take, okay. take a shot of it, have a good okay. time. But what's special about this shot glass is this little nub here in front. You see, we remove that. It's a USB. Now, on this USB, oh, I put that there. On this USB okay. is the music of one... Uh, effervescent songstress Ali Spagnola. What she decided to do was take a popular party game known as the Power Hour and really make it her own. So the Power Hour, Dick, you ever, you ever played a Power Hour? No. Okay, the Power Hour is very, very simple. What you doing? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to here and just give a... This is another piece of technology that uh, I'm quite fond of. It's a can of beer. And okay. um, this retails for, uh, uh, I, I think, probably close to $2 a can. And, okay. Uh, actually, probably less than that because it's not good. It's terrible beer. Um, <laughs> See, okay. And we're not, we're not, gonna, we're not going to uh, we're not gonna reveal what beer it is. We've wrapped it in a spooky juice wrapper. Um, but it, uh, let's just say it won the blue ribbon for crappiness. Um, oh, okay, okay. So uh, what, what the deal is, is a power hour is where you play, normally what people do it would cut up one minute versions of their favorite songs. They put 60 of them together and what you do is you take a shot at the end of every song. So if you're drinking beer, which I mean, you're not doing liquor because you literally die. Um, you, you wind up drinking like six beers in an hour. It, it's a lot of beer, okay? But okay. she decided to make it her own by creating 60 original one minute songs so you can play her version of the Power Hour, and it comes in this fancy, uh, this this fancy uh, uh, a shot glass on a string. It's a string, so when you get really wasted and plastered, you don't lose it. Uh, and, okay. and it has the the USB on. So uh, Jason actually has queued up 
one of the songs. I'll demonstrate how it works here. Okay. Now wait. You have to wait till the end of the song before you drink. Well, it. here. Hold on. Let's. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll just do a shot now. <laughs> so now we'll wait until the end of it. Okay. Uh, and listen, just voice of an angel, Ali Spagnola, right? Uh, fantastic. She was actually uh, part of our uh, NSFW South by Southwest show. She did a live version uh, of, of this entire Power Hour. She was part of our Dragon Con stuff. And she'll actually be on NSFW tonight, debuting a new version of the Power Hour. Uh, but if you were, like, so imagine you, Dick, bunch of your buddies sitting around, having a good time, listening to this good music, and then... Uh oh, we're getting close. Ding dong! One, one two, three, let's go! <laughs> well, it's just playing that one again. There we go. So, yeah, 60 different songs, uh, all wow. of them on uh, this here uh, USB. Actually, I think it's my 61 or 62. But uh, she wound up getting a bunch of press and was covered by uh, Gizmodo, a bunch of the other tech blogs, because she uh, was letting everybody know that apparently there was somebody out there trying to trademark the term Power Hour and was going to sue her and her merry-making ways out of existence. So uh, go uh. ahead and, and look at all those stories. Uh, pick it up on, on her website. It is uh, Ali Spagnola's Power Hour Shot Glass on a String. All right. And the price is? Just a, a slim $30. And also, <laughs> uh, you can download uh, just the album itself. Uh, Jason, if you... I think if you uh, scroll down a little bit, you might be able to find the price for just uh, just the songs. I think it's like ten bucks. But um, oh, so you can use your own glass and and yeah, use her music. Exactly. Oh, okay. So you can you can do that. And you want to know what? I'm almost sure. Uh, I'm almost positive that it's on YouTube for free. If you want to uh, pay the price of free ninety nine, you can go on YouTube and just uh, listen to all the songs. But support somebody who's doing something awesome and making a fun little gadget that not only gives you a, a, uh, a USB, but also a fun shot glass Oops. on a string, so you're not gonna lose it like a, like a Mook Idiot, like I am. I'll tell you what, Mook Idiots everywhere unite around Ali Spagnola, her Power Hour shot glass. Wow. Okay. See? Now you that was it. good. No, I, you, you, you never seen that, right? That wasn't a no, Pepcon. You, no, no. I was actually going to do that next week, but it's okay <laughs> because you you beat me to it, so that's fine. <laughs> that's just fine. Uh, now, uh, uh, Dick, b before we go into the, the gadget warehouse, I did want to ask you something. Uh, like, are yes. you a Black Friday guy? Like, are you going to be somebody that will be wading into the muck and the mire of, of Black Friday? No. Those are my attorneys, by the way, muck and mire. <laughs> uh, but I... I, I am no. I am a stay at home, look at the internet, and maybe buy something online. But I I cannot bear crowds, so I will not be there. No, you have to sharpen you, those you going, sharpen those bows and just yeah. Be are you going in? Are you oh, you got your no. eye on something? No, no, no. I mean, I'm usually Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday of of all of them, and largely because I like to just sit around. I just lie around like a beached whale with just like my shirt up to my my chest and just like uh drink myself into a coma and and, and yeah. there's but I've no seen time that in every that. single day yes no that's <laughs> it would be different if you left your shirt down and was sober on thanksgiving wouldn't that be different yeah yeah well you want to know what i'll tell you what once you got a good rhythm going you know you gotta <laughs> stick with the system you don't want to break it yeah are you are you <laughs> cooking do you go to people's houses How uh my it... mom my mom does a big thing every thanksgiving the uh, family comes over we all make a little uh football betting box pool and we have a good time a good time is had by all oh okay okay a, a big parade did they have a parade in oakland uh no i'll actually be back in my in my home state of, of florida i'm from uh the fort lauderdale area or oh, as, okay. as as we like to call it uh the the most southern borough of uh, new york and uh <laughs> we, which uh, is pretty true in the winter it certainly is yeah uh, and, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm down there. It's a gorgeous weather, so I'm very excited to get back down there. Okay. What's the weather in Petaluma? Because uh, I'm coming out there next week. Oh, really? Um, right now, it is uh, rainy with a chance of more rain. 
also oh. gloomy. And and uh. at some point, as always with Petaluma, there's at least a 40% chance that the chickens will revolt against their human overlords and peck all of our eyes out. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that's always been that way. Exactly. Although it used to be just 30%, so it is getting worse. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, I'll tell you what, I hear there's a, there's a warehouse, it's full of gadgets, we're gonna find one of them right now. They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play in Dick's Gadgets Warehouse. Luckily, oh, I was on the other end of my drink. Drink it on the microphone. <laughs> okay, so what we've done, Justin, is we have a new uh, little uh, feature uh, on the GizWiz okay. called Viewers Videos. And uh, after we see this video, I'll, I'll tell people how to send their video in. But we ask people to send us one thing category they can do is send us a video of like an old, old gadget that you can't part with. And this is an inspiring video because okay. the holiday season's coming up. It's a difficult time. You want to buy a person the exact right gift. You want to put some time and effort into it. And this Gizwiz fan sent us this very moving video. All right. I'll tell you what. My, my, my heartstrings are ready to be pulled. Let's go to the tape. is my favorite gadget. It is the Ronco battery tester. I received this as a present from my second husband about 30 years ago. He went out on Christmas Eve, he went to a drugstore and he purchased this lovely battery tester for me. And he gave it to me on Christmas morning wrapped in a brown paper bag. <laughs> Well, I still have this battery tester and I use it all the time. It's really good for testing batteries. You put the battery here and it gives you a little reading on the dial. I don't have that husband anymore, but I still have my <laughs> Runco battery tester. That just that, that puts you in the mood for the holidays right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, gentlemen. Step up your game. If you're going to be buying a last-minute <laughs> gift, do it in something better than a paper bag. All right? Yeah. Come yeah. on. But a battery tester, we can all agree, is a great Sweet. Christmas gift. Sweet. It's, they, uh, it's very good. It's very good. And don't forget, she said 35 years ago, stores were not open 24 hours a day. So this man did have to think, what's the last possible minute? I can leave the house and still make the drugstore before it closes. Exactly. He was probably so, like me on Thanksgiving right up until Christmas. He skipped the entire season. Uh, that was uh, Mary Ann Jorgensen who sent us the letter, uh, the uh, video of the week. And if you want to send in a video, it should be two to three minutes. Uh, and we have several categories. Uh, my favorite gadget of all time could be something you've only had for two months or something you've had for 30 years. I bought a piece of crap. If you got a gift or something you bought yourself and you thought it was going to be really great and you hate it, uh, we're not gazelle. We won't buy it back from you. No. But we'll give you the opportunity to talk about it and trash it on the show. I invented this. If you or a buddy invented something, a neighbor... Send us a little two to three minute video about that. We won't market it, but we can give you free airtime and uh, just send, uh, uh, post it on YouTube and send Jason a link. It would be gizwiz at twit.tv. Man, it oh, and there it is at the bottom. Folks. Jeez. What does one of us do? <laughs> Break into your house, film it ourselves? Come on. Gizwiz yeah, exactly. at twit.tv. Get your videos in there. They're going to be up there. It's not going to be my flapping head. No, it's going to be the big man, Leo Laporte and Dick T. Bartold, the kids was giving it, giving it the big intro. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, as fantastic as we get on this show. You know, I, we... <laughs> Let's all right. I'm sorry. I don't want to blow you up here, Dick. I don't want to, I don't want to be writing checks that this show can't cast. Oh, let yeah, me, let, me, let, let me reset that, it. Yeah. It's going the to be word fine. writing checks does not appear uh, anywhere on this show. <laughs>
And then we do something called the letter of the week. There you are. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I got, I got, I got who scout on the okie doke there on that no, fake ending. No I got juked out of my shorts, Dick. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's okay. And Jason, you, uh, you have that uh, link to go to? I uh, do. Did you? You do. Okay. Absolutely. So this email is from Greg Franz, F R A N Z. The subject matter is cool gadgets, and he writes a site I visit now and then is Fish Fish. Whoa, F I S K I. Fishki. Fishki. Yeah. Uh, go to the English version. It is only pictures. There is no text, but there are some really cool gadgets. And if you're uh, just Whoa, listening to this, what is in Jason, that candy cane? <laughs> so that's the candy cane, so you can make your own tea. We oh, saw it originally in a teacup. Yep, calm down, tea. Justin. Okay. All right. I just, listen, uh, I don't know what goes down in fish key, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, this is a uh, a mug, four set, four mugs that when they put together <laughs> make a very interesting animal character in a shirt and tie. There's some really fun, br the brass knuckles. Oh, uh, look at drinking. that. Fist, fist cup, it's called. And, and it, it's yeah. brass knuckles on the side of coffee. If you ever just really want to uh, hit somebody in the head with a full cup of coffee, now, boom, solved. There you go. There you go. Uh, this is a cow. <laughs> now, that, would be, that would be one of those great late night infomercials. Has this ever happened to you? You want to <laughs> hit a dude in the head with a full cup of coffee, but you can't get the right grip. Oh, I can't. Oh, I, I can't get my fingers in this cup. <laughs> oh, I can't hit with this cup. Exactly. I mean, the guy's laughing at you. <laughs> You'll never hit me with that full cup of coffee in the head. <laughs> well, now, welcome to Fisticup. Uh, all right. Well, what else do they have on there on, on Fishkey? Uh, let's just go to do a few. Uh, half and half. I believe that's uh, half. Of, this oh, is look half at that. and half. So yeah, yeah it, it's a it's a big pitcher. So you pour milk in it, but it looks like uh, it's recessed in the bottom in a certain way to where it looks like big milky white udders. <laughs> udders. Yeah, cow <laughs> udders. Uh, this is this is one of my favorites. So you want to have a chain around your bike, and you want it the chain to go to a pole outside, but you don't want to look like you really are trying to, you know have some tough chain so this chain is adorned with ivy leaves so it's sort of it's sort of like it's like camouflage please, for your bike locks. please yes yes exactly please don't touch my bike exactly. because basically uh you know actually i wonder if this uh chain is wi-fi enabled so. I, I don't know yeah you'd be able to communicate with it now you can yeah. finally be a recreational biker and look like the overprotected son of uh batman villainess poison ivy yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Exactly. We can now solve that problem. Uh, then we have a multicolored or a plain gray AC power bar. Absolutely. One of them has and apparently gotten a star in Mario, and the other one has yet to. Yeah, and this is if you really like to charge gadgets. This goes into an AC outlet and then has four USB charging ports. Wow, so that that's actually I want actually want I actually need to buy that. That's not even that a joke. You no, know, I don't know that. where the the original website is located, but it's kind of daunting or depressing. Wait, can you not buy the, it from there? Can you can no, is, is it a link? No, no uh, it's just a picture. Every, every, say again. It's just a picture. Yeah. What is this? What, just, what, just a picture. What is this? This taunting. Yeah, I know. Well, Fishkey? I know. What the H, bro? It's Fishkey.net. Actually, the, uh, I put the link on my website. Uh, Fishkey.tees so uh, is more like it. <laughs> yeah. I want to exactly. I want to buy that, and I can't just, now. Just do one more, uh, Jason, because this one is kind of scary. I don't want these things in my house. Oh. They're, yeah, I know. I, I know. They are towel racks that are like people sticking their hands through the wall. Yeah. Really. Like, scary. imagine, um, for some reason, the T-1000 from Terminator 2 were stuck inside your house and was about to reach out and strangle you to death. That, yep, but with it. towel racks. That's what you got. That's what you got. Yeah. Right here in River City, pal. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If well, anyone you know were what? ever able to I find out so... what the hell these things, where you could buy these things. Uh, well, you know, we, have, we have another game where where you, you'll you see pictures, but you can actually look at the picture and win something. And that's yes. over at, at gizwiz.biz. And you can play the what the heck is it game. So you go want to, to you want to know what, Dick? Uh, this is actually a true story. So I, I travel around uh, the country and I put yes. on these scavenger hunts. And part of the uh, way that we do it is we hire actors. We hire local actors to be part of the game. Yeah. I was at a game in Orlando, Florida, not but two weeks ago. And one of my actors was the winner of the last what is it contest that you had. He guessed Optimus Prime's condom. Whoa. See, and it is a classy game. It is a classy game, <laughs> yeah. and it is spreading across the nation. I think he's watching now, so uh, hello uh, to, I believe his name is Jonathan. If it's not Jonathan, I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm almost positive it's Jonathan. Uh, there we go, that guy on chat. I think that it's probably him. Uh, so, so there we go, spreading across the nation. Everybody head on over. What is the website again, Dick? Uh, Gizwiz.biz, click on the what the heck is it and identify that yellow thing. And the best thing is you really don't, if you know what it is, fine, send it in. But if you don't know what it is, make up a silly, stupid answer. Absolutely. And we give away up to 36 autographed Mad Magazines, 12 for the right answer, 24 for cute, silly answers that we like. And uh, the email and everything is in there. And... Uh, do it. You'll win the January issue of Mad Magazine, which is the issue that is the 20 dumbest people, places, and things of 2012. There and in go. that issue, I have the satire. I wrote the satire on the Apple letter about Apple Maps. So ah. you can look that issue. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. That is something, number one, everybody should own and, and uh, hopefully will have in their house, of course, the Mad Magazine issue. But head on over to gizwiz.biz. Make sure you find out what is it before somebody else does. Because I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I got some guesses. Uh, oh, okay. And they're all graphic, and I can't mention them here on the show. Oh, okay, okay. But, but I do. I'm going to privately whisper them to other people here in the studio. Oh, okay. You know, it is so amazing that we were able to get through an entire gizwiz show without a certain person getting out of that locked room well, and running in listen here's to... here here's the deal i told him that okay. everything was recording hey hey guys hey later. guys guys what? i'm i'm here i'm i'm here i what i got an email from both of you, you saying know that what? we it moved was flash flood warning we moved it an the, hour no, later the problem was it was a flash flood I had to run in do oh, the show yeah. real quick. I, we, well, you know what? So, yeah. I'm here. Well, I'm here now. Do we uh, want to record you know, now? Actually, it's done. Can we do it again? We did all it's the stuff on flood-related gadgets. I, okay. Yeah. Sorry, pretty though. Much. Man. Maybe no, next I, week. I got that Maybe email next that week, said that, that it was a recording an hour later, and I really thought yeah. that I, oh, man. You can do the ending. You know what? We can end. Let's let's go ahead and 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 besides the fact that we look like negatives in a photo <laughs> taken in black and red. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, well, that, that, that about wraps it up. And, and uh, for, for me and Chad, who were here uh, in, in Leo's stead, Leo will be back next week, uh, ready to rock and roll. And, and uh, Dick, you're going to be live in the studio? I will be live in the studio. I'm flying out on the United Dreamliner. I made a special trip. I didn't know where to fly. I wanted to fly on that airplane while it's, it's only doing uh, domestic stops for one month. Yes. And then... It'll be an international plane only. So I thought, well, I'll just go out to Petaluma and um, do the do it live next Tuesday. So they're landing so the Dreamliner right here on Petaluma Boulevard South, and Dick they, will, uh, they are. will they, make they his are. way out like the Beatles uh, to, to massive acclaim right up here to the studio. Uh, Dick, thank you very much. This has been uh, amazing. Uh, uh, Justin, this was you. super. This was really good. I'll, I'll just leave. So now, now yeah, I have to be on your show. Okay, get goodbye. No, uh, Dick, you are always welcome. We'll, we'll schedule you on NSFW uh, ASAP. It's going to be uh, fantastic. Maybe Which I'll is, tell you what. Is it? It's on Tuesdays. Ahead. You're going to be live in studio next Tuesday. When do you say we figure it out? You just hang out at the studio a little bit longer. We do NSFW. It's at seven o'clock. We'll figure it out. We don't, we don't have to say nothing now. We'll figure it out. Okay. Take care. Okay, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody.
Every day.